I have really gotten to the point where there's one player that I really, really cover for the Pistons at five. We talked about it briefly yesterday, but that's Reed Shepard. Reed Shepard shot over 50% from three. Uh, he really does a lot of, of the little things that helps a team win. Uh, really good defensively. A, he actually, I think, surprised people at the combine with his let, his athleticism, his vertical jump, and the numbers he put up. But he's tiny. He's he's six two. That's not tiny, but he's a smaller. By NBA yeah. standards, he's a smaller, smaller. player. Uh but you know, it's this draft. This draft, by all accounts, it sucks. And so, even the player that I covet the most, I can see a strong argument against. Last week, I was going on and on about Dalton Connect, the shooter from Tennessee. He's, he's bigger than Reed Shepard. Uh, but a five-year college player, some questions about will he be challenged defensively and things of that nature, and we got some texts of people ripping that I like Dalton Connect. And I said, yeah, but this draft sucks. And then there's Cody Williams, the the long-arm kid out of, of Colorado. Who, who doesn't have a great vertical leap, apparently, but he's got length. Yeah, they say he's creative at finishing near the basket, and his shot is pretty. But he only took, how many threes did he take? He took 41 threes, but knocked down 41% of those 41 threes. Which isn't a huge sample size. No. There's plenty of, of times where I've watched tape and I'm like, oh, he's kind of floating. But he's kind of a theoretical player of what he can be. And I like him. I don't love him. And at five, I don't want to play take a player that I like. But this draft sucks. <laughs> and then there's Devin Carter. Who was the Big East player of the year? Providence. Out of Providence. Who's a worker. He's a leader. He's smart. He's a glue guy. And those are all intangibles that helps your team win. Would I draft a glue guy at five? Normally, no. But this draft sucks. Sure. So I feel like every single player that I, and I don't want Matas Bazelis. And uh, there are players, other players, I guess, could theoretically, I mean, if Alexander Saar is still there, he's another player that was coming off the bench for his team in Australia, I think it was. And you're like, okay, is is he really going to be all that? And he might be, but all the players, I, I, I just keep coming back to, you're taking a chance no matter who you're taking because there aren't sure things. The Rissache kid from France, <laughs> same thing. There's just not a lot out there on him. Another theoretical player. He could be this. You know You know who I don't want? Who? You're going to say Reed Shepard, aren't you? Um, no, no, I'm not going to okay. say good. Anyway, I mean, he's got one thing you love, which is yep. shooting 50% from three-point line is great. Yep. But a name I, I hear people talk about that they like this guy, and I'm like, I, I don't get it. And I watched him play in the tournament. I'm like, I still don't get it. Donovan Klingon. Yeah. There is some the discussion. Center from UConn, 7 2. Yep. Can't shoot. There's some discussion of him maybe going number one. It, but he can't shoot. I don't it, understand. I thought, I thought there's so, everybody was like, you got to be able to shoot in order to play. Yeah. I mean, and defensively, I, don't, I guess you, you could play defensively. There's a lot of players. Like, I feel like. The, the Bazellus to me, Bazellus is another a, a sore Thompson, you know. And, and unless you think he's going to be better than a sore Thompson, I wouldn't take him. Uh the 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 Devin Carter kid is is really intriguing. What I like about him most is that through his college career, he didn't really shoot it, and he, I guess he worked on it, and worked on it, and worked on it, and last year. He went, here's three years in college, 26.7 from three, 29.9 from three, 37.7 from three. So he did turn himself into a pretty good shooter. So I'm okay if it's Devin Carter, but he's another guy who's only 6'2". So I wonder if NBA guys love this as a draft or hate it. And what I mean by that is they're all, it feels like they're all being asked to be, they're being asked and challenged by this draft to be the smartest guy in the room because mm. there aren't sure things. 
it's not like typical drafts where you would say, wow, there's a handful of guys we love, and then there's a handful of guys we really like. Mm-hmm. And then there, it, it feels like this draft, there's a couple of guys that they really like, and that's but, it. And then beyond, then it starts to get like the rest of these guys in, in normal draft years might be middle of the draft picks. Like, are they would they be lottery picks in normal drafts? I mean, or at least what the Pistons are looking at at five is. A, I don't know that a lot of what we're looking at at five would be lottery picks yeah, in I don't normal know drafts. It, it's just, um, I don't. I don't know why it happened this year. I don't know if this is a new trend moving forward that everything is is that's going to be taken is either four and five year college players or players that are just barely scraping the surface and starting to show a little bit of promise and they get drafted. But uh, this is this is such a weird weird draft. I would imagine the GMs probably like it because they're asked to really do deep dives on players, really do homework, and. And they're not being told, well, you have to take this guy. Like if you hear, well, you got to take Torkelson, you got to take Torkelson, you got to take Torkelson enough. Everyone's got Torkelson number one. As a GM, are you are you confident enough to not take Torkelson when everybody's telling you you have to take Torkelson? This year, nobody's telling you what you have to do because there are so many players that have question marks around them. There's no sure things in this draft, it feels like. No, it doesn't feel that way. At least that's what I'm being told. Yeah. You know, by my own eyeball test, I'm not impressed. Um, but I also know that every draft is full of superstars. They're, they're full. You got to do your homework. Of course, they got to develop and they got to be, you know, they got to be coached up and they got to be in the right situations here. Well, that's, I'm not, I can't get too emotional about what's going to happen tomorrow night at five. I'm open to everything, I'm open to almost every player. Except for Klingon, that's the only guy I'm not really big on. But I don't know. I mean, I, I want to see. I, I'm open to trading up. I'm open to trading back. I'm I'm excited to see what they're going to do. What what Trajan Langdon's efforts are going to be here. They still don't have a coach, which is interesting. Yep. Well, I mean, what you're looking at is essentially the first sign of what Trajan Langdon's going to be. Who's his Justin Henry Malloy? <laughs> which is one of the first things. <laughs> the first move. Yeah, his first move. <laughs> 